Hey everybody, it's Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com. I'm going to show some diagrams of an architecture of a system, and I want you in the comments to let me know what type of architecture is this. Maybe you think it's microservices, or a monolith, or maybe a modular monolith, or maybe something completely separate. But I want you to let me know in the comments what you think it is, and specifically of why. Before we get into this video of Guess the Architecture, I'd like to thank EventStore for sponsoring this video. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So the first thing we have is an HTTP API that is going to be hosted in some container, process. It could be scaled out horizontally for load balancing. That's not the point, but it is. It's a kind of its own self-contained executable process container, whatever the case may be, and it's interacting with the database. Now, typically what you'll see in a larger system is that not all the work is actually done through some single entry point like an HTTP API. Oftentimes what you'll end up having, in this case it does, it has some separate process, again, could be a separate container, that is a worker that has um, executing against things like a message broker. These could be messages in a queue. It could be a topic for events. But we have our HTTP API that's interacting with that exact same database as our worker. They're two separate props processes. So maybe our HTTP API um, adds some messages to our broker. The worker's consuming those. It could be doing that as well. But so far, we have kind of two separate processes interacting with a single broker and a single database. Now, it's worth pointing out that the HTTP API and the worker are actually the same underlying code base. They're just different entry points. So they can be scaled differently. They're their own process, own container. So that can be managed separately. But really at the heart of it, they're just different entry points that are from the same code base. Now, if we dig a little bit deeper into that code base of the HTTP API or the worker underlying the same thing, we can see that it's really broken apart into having different boundaries within our system. So we have sales, payments, and marketing. And the way that these are kind of defined is that their own kind of separate units where they have their own concerns and they actually have all the capabilities of that particular boundary. So sales deals with sales. We have payments that does our payment processing, probably interacts with the payment gateway. Marketing is doing something separately, more like CRM based, probably has some email distribution, et cetera. But all these separate boundaries have their own kind of business concerns within them. Now these boundaries are likely organized independently within your code base. So all the functionality related to one of those is kind of grouped together, but there is likely coupling between them because you oftentimes need to invoke some request or some behavior from cross boundary. So there's coupling that it likely does exist, but they're probably more organized in terms of capability of what the boundaries are. And because of these boundaries, we may decide because of different scaling concerns that sales, we want to deploy it independently differently. We want to scale it differently. So we can have it in its own process or container separate from payments and marketing at the HP API level, as well as possibly as the worker level. So we're going to separate that out, but it's still using the same database. It's still interacting with the same broker. We're just going to be deploying it separately and scaling it differently possibly. But as I mentioned, there may be coupling between boundaries and if it wasn't all done through the broker to remove kind of that temporal aspect of it for events and messages and queues, et cetera, if we were doing stuff that was previously in process because it was all hosted together, now we've introduced some type of network call, RPC call between sales now to have to either make a call to the payments um, or marketing or query for data, et cetera, to use some type of API. We removed that in process and now we're doing something RPC over the network. So what would you call this architecture so far? Let me know in the comments. Is it a monolith? But we have multiple processes of our HTTP API and a worker. We define within that, we actually can scale those out differently if we want to segregate particular boundaries that we've defined. So we could have different boundaries, different scale them independently. We have different entry points of our HPI and our worker. What is it so far? And when these boundaries were defined, it wasn't that they were just defined in source code, but as well as they weren't necessarily sharing a schema. They were sharing earlier a database instance, but maybe they still had a separate schema within that shared database instance. And the same type of idea here is that maybe we decide, okay, well, sales has different load requirements in its database. Maybe it's doing something completely different. So it has its own schema. Maybe we decide, actually, in this case, we want to scale it separately. So it's going to have its own database as well. And if we can do that, we can do this, which is each individual boundary of sales, payments, and marketing is completely deployed separately. It interacts with its own separate database. 
and they communicate via message broker. So we have a system that has two different entry points of an HTTP API and a worker using the same code base. From there, in each of that code base, we've defined boundaries related to capabilities of our system. So we have three that we defined there. Each one of those also has its respective database schema that it owns. And beyond that, we can then decide how we want to deploy physically each individual boundary and or schema separately. So what actually do we make? And this is what I despise often about kind of the conversation around monoliths and microservices as the examples, because they're usually following under this category, which is assuming that you're defining some logical boundary that's gonna have its own source repository that's gonna be deployed independently on its own as a process, as a container, et cetera. We assume in most circumstances of either a monolith that it's gonna be like this. We just have some monolith code base that we turn into some physical deployment unit, that's the end of it. Or we're gonna do this, et cetera, for tiny little services and call that microservices. And each microservice, its own little logical boundary that has its own code base that's deployed independently. But as I was illustrating, that logical boundary and that physical boundary as I started were one-to-one, -one, but they didn't have to be. So we started off, we had a logical boundary with the same source repository, and we turned that into two different entry points, our HTTP API and our worker. We could keep going with this and saying, okay, well actually our logical boundary has two different source rep repositories. Maybe one's our front end, one's a back end, and those are deployed independently into separate containers. We could say that, okay, we have this service that has different source uh, repositories during our build process that turns into a single container, maybe a single process or multiple processes within that container. The best example of this is you have different services. Maybe there's a backend, maybe there's a mobile aspect to that. Maybe that backend turns into a container, but your mobile app is composed of different things that turn into that deployable, for example, an Android and APK. So the idea here is that if you have a logical boundary, how you compose that into source code and how that gets composed into how you physically deploy that is really just a big mix and match. So what type of architecture is this? Maybe you're thinking on, well, it depends how it's deployed, really kind of that characteristic is what determines it. I'm not so sure about that. If you're thinking about, well, you define these logical boundaries and all of it was together, so that's like a modular monolith. Still not so sure about that. I think where the issue is for me is our industry conflating logical and physical boundaries and thinking about them, about them and how they can change, like I was mentioning with a mix and match. If you have logical boundaries and you define, deploy them together, is that a modular monolith? Well, what happens in out of nowhere, I can deploy those independently. Did I just turn it into microservices? I think when you start separating these two concepts, a logical and physical together, you can kind of see where the lunacy of all this talk about microservices or monoliths and modular monoliths, when that conversation actually stops to make sense when you're really making the distinction between logical and physical. Now, a big portion of this, if you watch any of my videos, this always revolves around it, it's coupling how you're coupled between these logical boundaries plays a big role in really kind of the, the options that you have. If you're tightly coupled because you were doing a lot of stuff in process, now it's RPC because maybe you move stuff physically out to a different process. What happens when you make changes to one service or the other? Do you need to deploy both services together? Well, maybe now you really have a distributed monolith because you can't deploy one independently. Just because you have a worker and a uh, HP API, that can still be a monolith. A lot of this really comes down to coupling and how versatile, like how much options do you have of deploying things individually without really having to think about, oh, th this all has to go out together. That's a really key factor to this is coupling. So of course, let me know in the comments what you think and why. If you wanna chat with other software developers about topics like this, you can get access to my private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you have any other thoughts or questions, just let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.